This video is a video for the Poppins bag, and it's the first in a series of several. Uh, the Poppin, Poppins bag can be made out of one focus fabric uh, with binding uh, in a coordinating color, or it can be made from two and a half inch strips. Now notice on this bag I've added the front outside pockets are made from a panel, so if you have an interesting print, an art print, uh, some type of panel that you like, you can cut that up and uh, use it for your outside pockets. The bag also has two inside pockets. In this video, we're going to be talking about the center panel on the bag that's made from one focus fabric. We're also going to show you how to add the side panels and do your channel stitching. If you can notice on the bag, there are ridges uh, every half inch, and that is called channel stitching. Uh, it adds strength, and it also adds a little texture to the bag. Uh, I'm going to come over to the ironing table and show you how to do the center panel. The first thing that you're going to do is you're going to cut two pieces. Uh, two pieces for the front, and you're also going to cut two pieces for the bag back. You're going to be cutting the outside and the inside. Those two pieces, because this bag is a big bag, you want those two pieces to be fused to interfacing. We are using Inner Form Plus, which is a double-sided fusible foam interfacing by Bosel. So we are fusing fabric to a piece of double-sided fusible. Remember to use parchment paper or a Teflon ironing sheet on your uh, ironing board when you do that. And you're going to fuse the interfacing to the back of one piece, and you're going to fuse it to the back of another piece. Now, I've left these separated so I can show you. Then you're going to fuse those two pieces together before you do any channel stitching. The two layers of inner form is really going to create um, some sturdiness to the outside of the bag. The next thing that you're going to do is you're going to draw some channels, uh, some lines on your fabric. Now these lines are drawn every inch and you can see them better at the upper part of this fabric than you can at the lower part of the fabric. You're going to start by, by drawing a line in the very center of your fabric. You're then going to draw a line every inch, so you're going to draw four lines to the right and four lines to the left. This is your center line and this is important throughout the bag. So after you finish stitching on that line, you're going to want to pin, put a pin there to designate that um, center line. Once you have drawn your lines, you're going to stitch on this center line and then stitch on these two outside lines. That will set everything. It will stabilize your interfacing. Then you'll go back and stitch on the other lines. And then you're going to stitch in between those lines. Now I don't know if you can see this with the shadows and the ripple effect that that gives your fabric, but it's a nice texture. So again, you're drawing, you're going to sew on the lines and then in between each line. Do not sew past that outside line. The next thing that you're going to do, um, re remember I said to make sure that you put a pin in that center line so you're not confused on which one is your center line. The next thing that you're going to do is you're going to make pockets for the outside. Now I've used a very focal part of this fabric. This is the Chrysler building in New York and I've used that for the outside pockets. So I am going to place the outside pockets up before that. I'm going to go back one step. Talk about the center line one more time. When you finish stitching you're then going to trim this piece to ten and a half inches wide. So you're going to trim five and a quarter inches from the center line out and five and a quarter inches 
from the center line out on both sides. So this is 10 and a half inches wide with the center line in the very middle. Now we'll go back to the pocket. So um, on this one, I've just chosen to use a lining fabric for the inside of the pocket. And then uh, I'm going to pin the pocket on the outside. And I pin at the top and at the bottom. Pinning at the top and at the bottom. If maybe when you were cutting you didn't cut this exactly ten and a half inches um, and when you bind it maybe it stretched a little bit. If you're wider than the ten and a half inches you want to trim any excess off of your pocket. Then you'll also, now this is the inside pocket. Now the inside pocket is made from the darker part of this panel and again we're going to pin at the top, pin at the bottom, pin at the top, and pin at the bottom. And the reason that I'm just pinning in those two places is we're going to be, the next step is we're going to be adding the side panels. So when we go to add the side panels, I just need to make sure that the top of the bag doesn't fold over, so I pin it right there. So the side panels are a little narrower than the central, center panel. So you're going to put one side panel right sides down on the front. And what I do is I will, I'm going to stitch from the top to the bottom. I'm going to just pin the top. And then as I stitch, I'll kind of um, make sure that all of my raw edges are lined up by looking at it. So I'm going to pin one on the top, and then I'm going to pin the inside side panel on the bottom. Now in each case, we want right sides facing. So I'm going to pin that on on the bottom. Now I'm going to go to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch down this with a quarter of an inch seam. Now I'm going to line up those raw edges. Got to get that underneath one all lined up. And I'm going to stitch with a quarter of an inch seam. Now Using such uh, thick uh, layers, I want to make sure that uh, I can stitch through them pretty easily, so I do use a walking foot. Now, one thing that will happen is it may stretch as you're sewing it a little bit. You want to make sure all your edges are lined up. Walking foot will help with keeping uh, everything from stretching, but even on some fabrics you'll find that there'll be a little bit of stretching going on, and that's fine because we'll trim this off later. So clip your thread. Now I'm going back to the ironing table. Now notice I have two more pieces of inner form plus that I've cut. And what I'm going to do here is I am going to fuse one of these pieces to the front. Then I'm going to layer the second piece on and fold the uh, back side, uh, inside piece, side piece out. So I'm going to place the inner form right up next to what I just sewed. And this is the front. So I'm going to pull it across so that the raw edge of the fabric matches the raw edge of the interfacing. And I'm going to sew it on. I like a good steam iron, so I found that these uh, Euro steam irons are very good. 
Now I've got parchment paper underneath because I am uh, using a double sided fusible. So I've done the front side. Now I'm going to flip that over and I've fused it lightly. I'm going to remove that pen. Take the second panel, lay it on top so that I'm matching the raw edges of the interfacing on this side. Pull the fabric over from the inside. Pull it over as far as you can. You are going to be trimming this down so if it doesn't match perfectly that's fine. And then you're going to fuse that down. Flip it back over to the front. You're going to be trimming this about a half an inch, so don't worry about the, um, if it doesn't match perfectly. Use that. Now, you're going to do the channel stitching on this side the same way that you did the channel stitching in the center. You're going to draw your lines, you're going to stitch on your inch lines, and then stitch in between those lines. The very first stitch we are going to do, or the very first line that we are going to sew after we've done this right here, fusing the fabric on, is we're going to stitch a half an inch away from that seam all the way down here. Now if you look on this bag, I'm just going to tip this up and bring it down to the table a little bit. Do you see that line right there? That's the first line that you're going to stitch after you've fused your pieces on. And then you're going to stitch all these lines after you've drawn lines on here every inch. You'll do one side and then you'll do the other side. And that's it for the bag body. Now remember you're going to make two of these. One will be for the front of the bag and one will be for the back of the bag. That's it.